Look at that accuracy. <gasps> I like that bow tie you've got on. What is that? Okay, are we roasting? <laughs> are we roasting right now? Guys, guess who messaged me on Instagram? I did the Doombird 4 video. Discmania reached out and they said, yo, we watch your stuff and we love it. And they're going to include my 18 holes with all the S line in their article. Something like that. They're going to, they like my stuff. Okay. And I thought that was crazy. I didn't even know they watched my stuff. Now on a more serious note, quick disclaimer, this is not a tutorial. If you want to take some of these experiences of myself and apply them to your game, you're more than welcome to. So as far as the grip, when I first started, I had zero idea what I was doing. I was literally an idiot. I would have my index finger literally on the rim like that. That makes any sense. I'd have these three fingers at the bottom and I wouldn't use my wrist. I would use these three fingers to spin the disc. Like that's, that's what I did. I would do it so much that after practicing, I would have like dirt and black on just these three fingers because they'd be touching the bottom of the plate and that's how I was spinning the thing. It was dumb. And people would always be like, oh, you love PA3s because of the bead? And I'm like, sure, love the bead. Until enough people asked me that, that I was like, why do they keep talking about this bead? So I was like, oh, you put your finger down. So I started doing that. Still never fix the finger problem. I was still never using, still never using my wrist. So still doing the squat, I was getting the power because I was coming low, I was using my legs. Until literally maybe six months ago, I saw a Calvin video talking about how he uses his wrist and he practices just spinning, trying to throw the disc as high as he can without like using his arm, just all wrist. How high can you throw? And he's, he's working that muscle and spinning. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not using my wrist. So that was a complete switch. So my new grip, fingers are pretty much in the same spot. They're more down now. My index finger is across the bottom and I hold it like this. There's the front, there's the back. I use my index finger as like my point. I hold it, I come down straight and I really use my wrist Oh, I'm so sad. Really use my wrist to spin it in. The more spin, it keeps my disc flat and straight. I have like 25 PA3s at the house, but every single day, 30 minutes a day. I promise it changes your game. I swear. It might not seem like it, and it didn't for me because I sucked at putting and I was still doing 30 minutes a day every day. And it's like three weeks in and I'm like, I still can't make 20 footers. You literally just have to trust the process and you'll find out that it's slow. It, it's, it's just slow and it's going to go. I have 25 PA3s at home. I had a Phi and then I also had a Penrose. Anytime I put those in my hand, the disc was coming out flat, no wobble. I didn't even care if I made it or not. I was actually making them a majority of the time, but I just love the way they were coming out each time. And I was like, okay, I think I need to make a switch. I was making the PA3s, but every time I put with the PA3s, I was just getting like wobble and I didn't like that. I didn't like it at all. And I love the clean release each time. So I switched up, I'm throwing fives now. You can definitely see the PA3 is a lot more flat. The five's thicker. There's no bead on the five. There's a bead on the PA3. And in my hand, I feel like it's just, that's what, that's what finding a good putter is. It's just what goes in your hand and feels like it belongs there. That's literally what it came down to. As far as practicing, there's actually a few things that I would strongly recommend. I told you this wasn't a tutorial, but I'm gonna recommend this. What you don't wanna do is have a stack in your hand and just putt, putt out of the stack in your hand. And the reason I say that is, you know when you're out playing on the course and you miss your first putt and then you throw your second one and it always goes in? It's because you, you're making that adjustment whether you know it or not. Unfortunately, you can't do that in a tournament. It's one putt at a time and that's it. So that's how you need to practice putting. Maybe that's not how you need to practice putting, that's just how I practice putting. I stack all of my stuff up and each time I go in my routine. I do my routine, everything, putt, whatever happens, happens, grab the new putter, do the routine over. And that's just to one, teach yourself a routine and two, it just eliminates that minor adjustment that you don't even know you're making, but you are making. You need to kind of, you need to figure out why you're missing, which leads me into my next thing is build a routine. A routine is very important because there's times out on the disc golf course where I'm missing my putts. I almost find myself relying on that routine, get familiar with something. If I'm missing putt after putt after putt, then it's like, okay, dude, hey, calm it down, focus on that routine, get into that groove, get into that familiar mindset of walking yourself through the routine, you hit your putt, and then if you miss right, you're like, okay, why did you miss right? Okay, it's my hand, my hand didn't fall through. On your next putt, you can think through, and you just keep going through that routine. As far as my routine, if that's my putt, I dress my target, I'm looking, I pick a spot in the chain link, and I stare at it. I tend to miss low, so I'm picking a higher up chain link, depending on where I'm at. Right foot forward, left foot out, pull up the pants, fix the shirt. As I'm doing that, I always have a big deep breath in. As I blow it out,
and I follow through. And lastly, I learned a term the other day, you want to build yourself a blueprint. So what I mean by building a blueprint is you know how, you know how there's those putts very every so often that the second it leaves your hand, it's going in the basket, you know it. You need to break down what just happened or what I'm trying to do is break down, okay, why did that feel so good? What did I do? So with each one of those putts, don't just go through the motions and everything. Really, really focus and figure out what you're doing. Why did it feel good? Was it the release? Was it your, was it your offhand coming back and really helping you point through and follow through? Was it the way that your fingers pointed at the basket? Focus on all those things and, and stay focused because if you get into like a, uh, if you just get into the motion where you're just grabbing one off, hitting the putt, grabbing one off, hitting the putt, you're gonna get kind of into a rhythm and you're not gonna know. So that's something that I've been trying to do a lot. One of the things I just recently learned is when I'm coming down and I'm going to putt, I bring my left hand back because it helps me point at the target. That's one thing that I helped a lot. I feel like now I'm on the pole, whereas I was kind of shaky, I'd be missing right, missing left. Now my problem mainly is height. Another thing is recording yourself. I've been doing a lot of stuff on the YouTube thing. I have to edit, so therefore I have to look at all of my missed putts and my shank shots. And in doing so, I noticed I miss low a lot. And the reason I'm missing low is because when I'm coming down, I'm standing on my tippy toes and I'm bent forward. It's hard to lift your hand up if you're bent over forward. So I'm trying to stay down, keep my chest up, and really point at the target. I'm bringing my left hand back. I feel like that was a lot to take in and kind of all over the place, but uh, that's uh, what you need to know about me putting.